Uh, before that, I start, I have a few questions. So, who wants that the speed go faster? This is just not for me if I can. Yeah. Or it was fine and it was not. Okay. Because, okay. So, then we will have six notebooks to see at home. Okay. I didn't try to make them in the web, but uh, there are more stuff that I may have to So, I feel that like we have time to do the second one and the third one. Maybe not until the end, but I hope to act the second and probably part of the first. And then the rest is maybe more text, so you can get the other solution here. So we start with points of basic uh, type, dictionary, code, integer, and all those stuff. So now we will see whatever allow you the what they call the control flow that you manipulate those. We send for loop, if, else, and see the syntax. Because Python is a bit specific on those compared to other languages, so in most particular, not quite from another language. So we'll start with so the if else statement, and an important thing if you come from so if you come from MATLAB, it looks like it may be the same. I don't remember. I maybe I don't remember. Uh, is it indented in MATLAB? No? no. Okay, so it's not the same. So this is the factor. So in, in Python, what's important is always the indentation is very important. So it's how you organize your code. So you have if statement, whatever is inside the block will be intended of four characters or two characters, that's where it's four characters. And when you go back, is that you get outside of the state. Okay? So this is something which you have to get used. And Get used also how to read it. So, first we have to create a with the if else and if and if a statement, which are the following to make two operators and to go in one branch, one other one. So, how to do that? So, we can declare two variables, so things a, a and b, which is equal to a one and two. So, yeah. You can maybe I never did it before, but you can inline declare several variables where one will be unpacked here and two will be unpacked inside the same variables. Sometimes that's saving some space or when you're in the And now I would like to make some comparisons. So for example, try to catch if A equals to B and put an inline. I finish my statement with two points, saying that that was my first if statement. I'm going back, and now I put an in there, and I will be able to put what I want inside my if to be executed when this is equal to true. Okay? So if A is equal, equal to B, I want to print. Okay? And to make the case that actually uh, this is useful, so we have A which is smaller than B. Okay. So I could make an if statement if A is inferior to B, please, A is inferior to B, and then lowercase, what the Then when we execute this, my ID were there, so what I went, I went through this branch, I did this, okay? So you can have the if, the elif, and the else, and then this, okay? I don't think that there is any branch, it's looking like in all in our language, the only thing that is maybe a bit more tricky is how it looks like to do that, okay? So if you forget, because it's always good to know, I think. Uh, if you forget the two points, you will have a syntax error. Okay, so if we tell you something about that, <laughs> is that you uh, can What else can happen? Yeah. E so that said, I, I want to be a boy. A is inferior to B. Mm -hmm. 
So this shouldn't work because I have a different indent and it will tell me that this, okay, indentation error and unexpected indent is finding that here I have a space more than the new line before. I don't know what to do and to which, where, where is it belonging to, and it's sending it. So I think mainly it's a good error that you can get when you mess up, when you write it, okay? And that you, when you saw those, you can think about indent is just an alignment, syntax is because you forgot a certain point or something. And sometimes when you get the errors, you don't only check the line that you have, but also the line before. Okay? Sometimes this is like you forgot a comma in the line before and it's telling you, hey, this line is wrong, but I created the one before that you forgot something. So that's what they believe in. So here, in the notebook, it was a different example where we changed the value of A and B to see that we execute different parts of the trees, but I mean, that's obvious. Uh, so now I have an exercise. So we saw already with list, so for instance, that's the empty list. And now the exercise using a if, trying to get that a list is empty or not empty. So for instance, if A is equal to that, I would like to write something, if, something with A, and print, this is empty. Or if, not A, to so say not uh, that if, so that we can be true, I will be done false, okay? And try to print something and check which statement will allow you to check actually that this is empty or not. You can find a couple of things and see what you can come with. the length, the only thing that we'll try to do is just 
Thanks to each of A, and you will know. So, I mean, in the end, this is how we are checking. Okay? So, this is a, a kind of, if you read a lot of code in the minute before writing Python, you really, if you see this, you will be more usually see this than to see the equal equal view. So, if you are just to show you the differences between when you come from Macad that you do something, in Python you write it in that way, and you will just do that way. Is it just a matter of style or just something? It's a matter of style. Okay. Because I learned that doing the same, uh, the, I know on the I know at the low level if the operation are the same. But uh, usually it's good. That's fine to anyway. Okay. No. Sure. So you can say it's nothing different, nothing. Because it has to be not A. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I mean, the only thing there is that you check that A is empty. So it's a list and it's empty. Mm -hmm. So you really want to write, write that because you know that A is a list. Okay, I mean, if I write in that way, the context mm -hmm. telling me that I want to check that the list is empty or not. Okay, the word context, I know this is a list and the way to write that if this is empty and that I want to do something with some time values, I will do it in that way. Uh, so, then, in a similar manner, let's try to write it in a Pythonic way that if I have a is equal to zero. How do you write the if statement to so that I can execute it? You would write it if A is equal to zero, or would you write it again if not? Would it work? So if I do that. Let's check E is not K. So it's E zero. So it will work the same way. Okay, so I could have write if A is equal to, equal to zero, but usually it's the same. We don't see it. People will try to write it that way. So now I will take the shortcut and summarize what they want. Which is, you have some stuff that trigger force, okay? And you have a couple of objects that are doing this, which is an empty list. So I will press the list of the things that are doing this. So zero, force, another one which is not. Okay? So this one is, with an example, if I in x, so I anticipate of all the follows. But what I try to do here is to take a follow on each element, and I will take this statement just to show you that actually you trigger that. Okay. For y in x, e y not uh, if not y means the same as force. Okay, so for the four elements that were in the same list, that were those one, if not y, will always be executed. So when you say if not y, don't I mean think about what y is because it could be one of those. Okay, so it's something to know. I mean, if you read some code, don't take a shortcut thinking that it's just only equal to zero because it could be none, it could be force, it could be an entity. So be careful about the context. So it's something that to be aware of. So if what I just explain here. So let's start with the for loop now. Uh, I just gave an example briefly of how for loop is doing, but I will give like more intuitive, I mean, it's in that piece of list, we can check that. So <coughs> let's copy paste this first step here. 
So the syntax is a similar way, but then we have for the index, for instance, of the variable where we want to compact <coughs> some values. And then we have the in, which is a missing well, the container. It will pick up the content of this list and pass it to the i and look over all those elements. Okay, that's the statement two point, and then and then you can do something. So for example, if I use this with this, it's printing the value one, two, three, four, because it will iterate over the list and take each element. So now I have a data size. Um, you can write inside the command line, help branch, it will give you a dot string, and for the one that comes from back up, it will be like thin space. And the range tells you some information, is the same line as the slice actually, where you can give some numbers, and my idea is to try to reproduce this thing here, but using, instead of using a list, try to use the range function. Okay? So you have the help here, and you can try to to write the first statement, and instead of write the list, you write the list, generate the list with range. Okay? And then you can print. So you can print the four first element to actually do like the upper examples, like this one. Okay? So for my list here, yeah. so that I pick up every element. If I have a string, what is you guess? What you would guess? So it's a container. Each number is in the place inside my container, right? For the string, I said that actually my array is a, a character in each okay. So if I have I will print each time one character because I will iterate over each of the of the uh, of the letter. Because what I'm storing is in each uh, cell is that makes sense? The that all it may not numbers in the list in the answers, I don't know. I mean, one, two, three. Ah, it will work eight. Okay. The same. Right. So if I have this? Yeah. Does it work the same one? Oops. So it will work exactly the same way, because it will iterate. That's an event, that's a second event, that's a third element. So it will be One, two, eight, four. So more interesting me. A, A, what do you expect? That is printing one, two, A, 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 A on each line. Or do you expect it to one, two, 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 A? Yeah. Okay, because this is a container. So it will print my full container. So if I do that. Okay, so it prints all this. And because the string are a bit more complicated, maybe some way it seems not like weird. Yeah, I could put something else. And here this more here, I mean that that's a container, so that's a list. So when I go to that, it's unpacking the police and print the police. So with the string it's the same. It's not splitting it for any reason because it knows the police. Okay. So going back to the range, I don't think this is more difficult than the size. Okay. So what we could do is for i in range, uh, the dot was saying that you can put either stop or the beginning, the, the stop and the step. So let's start by the stop. I would like to go until 4. Uh, but for even input, so we need 5. And then I can print i. And this is 
is creating virus and you can interact over. And in the same way, you can do fancy stuff like 0 until 10, and I want two values. Okay, and it will go by step of So the range function is really useful for that. One that you pass to NumPy, you will have other functions which are better ready to work with NumPy already. So we saw before a container. So now my question is just how would you do it? So you remember we had something that was saying I don't remember something like runs equal and we have three values inside. The very watch. Okay. How would you iterate on that? The same way than before? Great. Why is it different? It seems that it's working for a stream, it seems that it's working for a list. Why not as both of us? Okay. So we can try. So I will make put an S or maybe it's the S for months in once. So it's very obvious for the writing. I will continue. You can bring every value that you went back. And that's one. So it means that any container, you have always the same way of looking over. Okay. So you can use in. You don't have to, like, usually what you do in MATLAB or in C is to create an array with the index. And then you will go and pick up the elements related to the index. Okay. I mean, that's usually the, the common way. So in Python, you can already, when you have an array, you can already unpack the values directly and go inside that list and inside that tuple and get directly the value without indexing. Okay. So sometimes it is all that sort of you cannot have to it, but uh, I mean, the writing is, is easier to read. Then, if really you need an index, you have a function which is called enumerate. So you can need it for some reason. Uh, and somehow it's saying the following is an iterator for index. So when you create, when you want to look over uh, the months, for instance, in the tuple, what you would be interested in is also to know what are the corresponding index where you are. Because I mean maybe you want to do something in another thing and you want to assign. So I don't want only to know which element, but that's an index. So to do that, you can use the function you write. So what would be the index, the one one would be the months. And I can use the enumerate over the months. So you will return me two variables. That was my topper. So I, that's each element of my topper. And enumerate. With an unpack an index. Okay. So if I print IDX, let's make it in one line. The index was in the screen format for the primary. Okay. Format is a nice way of creating a string, and inside to uh, here I will replace what I put inside with the, the value of the variable. So to see, I will put index and months, and what will happen is that the value for my iteration here, index, will be put as the first one, and this one will be put as the second one. So if you want, for instance, for any reasons, is not a good order, you can also specify the order that you want. So here I want my second variable, the one that index one, and here I want the first variable, the one that index zero. So you can reverse, but try to make it in order sometimes it's better. Uh, and now I have things which are 
on the same client. So I have my index of my forms is the same time than my months. OK? Uh, the only claim is that zero is not the amount of generation. OK? So that's not super useful. What we would like is not to, we could write index plus one, but we are better than that. So what we can use is the zip function. So that is it. It's working a bit the same way. I mean, the syntax is the same way as the, than the enumerate. So what's actually happening? We call zip, and then we we'll give iterators come back to containers. I mean, this what we call containers, OK? So we could have a list here and a second list. And then if you read the doc, what zip will do is to try to take an element of each every time and give it to the and use it. So if I have two lists with three elements, I will take the two first elements, the two second elements, the two third elements. OK? So now there's a sense, now that it's going to is to write a form using zip, unpacking two lists, one or whatever iterable it is, where in the first iterable I will have the months, and the second one I will have the numeric I mean the, the numeric one, so one, two, three. Okay? So you create two things and then you unpack or you zip them, and then you can print the statement this month is index one. Okay? We have something which is not clear in what I say. Because I'm giving you the head now, we have to read somehow, so it's a bit tricky. If you are right, you just want to detail it. Before that, I give the solution of what is not fun. Yeah, that seems to be true. 
So I think that was the next question. Yeah. Uh, no, that was yeah. So for instance, I have that. I have two tuples, and I have more in months string than in the months indexes. Okay. So I will zip. I try to see what I'm printing. I need to check. I only three values. So it means that it took the three first value in command, and it just discarded the end of it. Okay. So be careful when you see things that you think that you do something, but actually you didn't finish the job. So be aware that that's one of the behavior that can happen. So always read the document. Uh, then just for information, you have another thing which is interesting in the, in the standard library, which is iterators. And can allow you to, the same as if you can make some operations. So for instance, one is products. It's just one example, but if you want to check more, you can check the help of key tools. I don't see the working in that way. Well. Okay, so it's just one example. Pray you better to go on the internet and check the full list. Okay. But the idea is that you have function, so it's uh, the product one which allow you to try so please we can we try from before and the products allow you to take my first list, take my second list, take the first element and try with all the elements of the second one, take the second element and try with all the elements of the second one so it makes the products of of the two list, okay? So sometimes you want you are interested in what is more complex iterators or iteration way of combining two lists or more lists. So if you need any of those, you can go and check if this is available in iter tools. Because the iter tools will allow you to inside the follow to make those kind of operations which are a bit more complex. Okay? So that's just two two more to look at. So the part will allow you to look over some stuff. And why we are so like in any you know, proper language, we have the why. Okay? So that's something that you probably probably also use in other languages. The statement is the one. You <laughs> check that the variable is bigger, smaller, or you make uh, like a statement of comparisons, and then you make an operations which is in the need. Okay. So in that case, we iterate over n until that the n is smaller than 10. After that, we break our, uh, our, our, if we want infinite loop for some reasons. So never do that. Huh? It's just to really straight the break statement. But this thing is doing exactly the same than before. So you should do it as before, not like this one. But I want to show that you can actually use a break at any point. I mean, you have, for instance, you have uh, an optimization function and you want to stop the iteration at some point for, because you, you have some, uh, some complaint with the iteration number or something like that. You can make a check with the if and say you make a break. When this is true, it will break UI. But in that case, I have like the y, infinite y, because y2 will just infinitely loop, and I can break it at that time. Okay? So if you change, that's working. Okay? It's working with breaking the infinite loop. Then this, so we have y, we have break, and then there's two other things which is going to continue and pass, is just to answer to this thing. What? What is your guess about continue? What will happen if I do this thing I mean, it's maybe confusing what continue would do and what pass would do. What would be the difference? Do you have any idea of? So here I just say that if I have a mute, if it's an odd or even normal, okay? So this. So what would happen if in that case? Do you have any clue? No? Mm -hmm. So continue, we just 
not execute what is afterwards. Okay, it will come here and it will come back to the next iterations. Pass is just something that lets pass. Okay. So if you check here, I have only this statement. So here the, the else pass is useless, but it just means to display that you can sometimes use pass in some way, and the pass is just making pass and continue. It's just skipping the current iterations. Okay? Do you need pass? No, no, it's what I say, you don't need pass. Here you just could display that. In some case, if you see pass, pass is just to let pass uh, the thing. I mean, it's to know that uh, the difference between continue and pass. I mean, you could explain that to continue, I know, for some reason, it's just continue the code. Okay? But that's not the case. There's a code and this is pass. But here, in that case, what you could write, you want to do that. I mean, did I understand right that continue moves to the next iteration yeah. and pass lets continue with the. Yeah, exactly. So, so pass, like, pass is essentially a no op, it does nothing yeah. at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just because there has to be something in the loop. In, in, so if you, uh, it, there has to be something in the, in the code block, mm -hmm. right? So if you say, if something, um, if some condition colon, then there has to be an indented block below that. And if you are not actually doing anything there, then you can just say pass, I'm not doing anything. And it's, um, it's sometimes actually used um, as a form of documentation. So um, you can say, if this condition applies, then actually do nothing. So you say pass else do something else, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just for, uh, as a marker saying, I, I've seen this case and I explicitly say do nothing. So, specifically in this case, but I would have write for only this, because the else pass is for you less. Okay, so that would be the same results. So, pass is definitely extremely rare to use. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's more in object oriented, and some way you don't want to implement the function, but you don't want the thing to break in some way, and you say, okay, you would have to implement that, but for the moment we don't break an error, so you pass this function, because it does nothing, but I want that it doesn't break the code of people. Okay, so you could have like empty function, that just pass, and for example, it doesn't break. That's the type of thing that sometimes happens. <laughs> So then next, we saw the list, we saw a for loop. So sometimes there is something nice in Python that you can do is to create a list in one line. So it's called list comprehensions. So let's first take this example of this, this code example, which is I have an empty list. Okay? And now we saw that we can loop over Right. So we we'll loop from 0 until 9, and then I can append each value inside A. So if I can this, it's is not working. It, it works in IPython, but in, in Python, you have to so it's because yeah, I, you have to keep the, the loop together, and the A is separate. So if A is equal to that. So, uh, I and now I have a list where I put those things. So it took somehow three line of codes to create a list with numbers. And a nice way of doing it is to compact this. So you could write in this way. And this way is known as these compressions. So you can usually, I mean, it's distinct. The syntax is distinct because you have the square brackets of the list. Okay? And inside, you will have the way that you create it here. So how you read it is I want to put an element i in this list. And the element i corresponds to each element of for i in range of 10. Okay? So in one line, I can create the same things. And you will encounter much more of this in Python than the other one where you create an empty list and just add the element inside. Okay? 
So now we saw that we can do that for, for a range of value, but we can even go further because, so in some way, when you read this, it's like if you read, if you read English, okay? And if I want to imagine, I want to make a problem in which, compared to before, I want to take only the odd numbers or the even in every approach. So I can do this, then I can do my form. Mm -hmm. Then I can make a check that the monitor, the monitor is one of zero in this one. I want to continue, so skip it. Otherwise, I want to do a dot append. Uh, the value of i. And if I do that, I have to go to 468. Okay, so now I, I need two lines more. With the list compression, you can also include this when you create a list. So if I go back here, I could say i. What I want, I want each i for i in range of this, but only if i is equal to respect this with here. Okay, so I do that. Write something in this way. So I will put on i when this is not true. So if not i will be true. Okay, it's true. And this is what I expect that we will create the same list in one, in one line. So we can add statement in that way. And if you check, that's doing exactly the same things, but in a compact manner. Okay? And in, when you are used to it, it looks like English speaking things. So, yeah. Is it a matter of personal preference, or is it a sort of a preference to do it in one line because it becomes less readable? Like. Uh, it's a Pythonic way. <laughs> uh, you can read a bit about these comparisons. I mean, the first time that I read apparently is the guy that in Python that said that was nicer than using some functions. So. Uh, in, in somewhere, it's avoiding sometimes to apply like math to reduce fit function that go in the middle. And when you use it, it's much easier to read. But it's good that the you need to be used to it. And also, you shouldn't, because you can go into infinity and put a lot of stuff. So I don't know if it's maybe my own rules, but if this compression takes more than three lines, that really you shouldn't make a discomprehension because it's too long. Oh, but that's my personal way of looking at it. So, so generally speaking, the append way, so the, the loop with the, uh, this append up there, is very uncommon. So you would almost never write this in, in Python unless the loop is actually more complex than what we have there. Um, something like this would always be spelled as a discomprehension. Um, and even if the discomprehension is a bit more complex, uh, you can make it more readable again by splitting it over multiple lines. So you don't have to write everything in one line. Um, even that one that we have here uh, with the for and the if, um, uh, sometimes you would say a equals uh, list of i. Um, then next line, for i in range 10, next line, if not. Yeah, so you can write this line for this second on the if. And then put the other sentence on the other one. So it's over three lines. And you see that ah, the first one will make an iteration, and the second one will make uh, a comparison to know what it is. So when you're used to it, you spot it much easier than doing it here in some way. Okay? But again, I mean, this is probably something that you get used to the times, and what you see a lot in India, that seems more natural. But it's not something that you have to know the language as much, so uh, maybe that's important. By the way, it was a combination of conditions. How many? I am different from three. For instance. Yeah, and we want the same list plus another condition. So if not in the rat and I. Okay, and we've got 
So you can add stuff. And then your if statement is like if you were writing your own if inside up there. So it's doing it inside. So you can also look at that. Okay, that will be copyright. One, one general remark regarding uh, readability. Um, so for this couple engines, um, the, the way you split them, if you keep them on one line or you split them across multiple lines, um, always depends on the, the complexity of the, the whole thing and where the complexity actually is in the statement. So sometimes the, the items that you collect in the list have a very complex expression. In that case, they would probably merit their own line and you would have the, the four uh, in the next line. Okay? So if you're not collecting eyes, but I choose something, function, call something, so very complex expression here, then that would be its own line, and the next line would say for I in range 10. Because yeah, here is a statement, I mean, this one is really, we take only I, but the like, you call many different things. Yeah. So, yeah, you get to it. So, so the, the, the splitting is, is kind of, uh, I think it's weak. when you get used, and that people take a while to do this, I set that. Which I'm still not that bad, but uh, it's by seeing how people do does that, and some way that start to be more readable. So now we just did the list. And how you would do that, so you remember that uh, you have the dictionary, and the dictionary was something that I Somehow a key and a value, and that you were given using so key one, value one, key two, value two. So we saw that the list you can put square brackets and numbers inside, and after create the list. And for the literature, we're doing it in that way. There's a way of Creating a dictionary in the same way. Uh, I thought I could do this as an exercise and I put this here. Let me try during two or three minutes. What you would write, try to do the same similar thing than here and try to create a dictionary. For instance, with a, with a month, so you have a, a list with uh, the months uh, as a string, the months as an index. And then you want to write, we saw that we can write the fold with I, Z, with a Z. Okay. So we can add this, and then you will try to create a dictionary in that way. So just here, you saw that this is a square bracket. The dictionary is a very really curly bracket. And the only thing that changes between the set and the dictionary is that you have a key and a value. So you can find it in two minutes to try to make a dictionary comprehension to create each other on the way. Okay. So the only thing that you can start with just
So would that errors when they try to take something? Reason when you can stand and you select to what you get. So we'll get the solution maybe. No? Nobody? We try it. So the syntax as for the list. We start with the syntax which is kind of dictionary wise, okay? So we, we know that from this how we should have different brackets. Then what we know also is that here to get each element, what would make sense is to use the zip to get every element. So with what we can put it, we will have at some point zip once string months index. Okay? So we know that, and we look, want to look over that. Okay, so for S, or I will call it this way, because we are working with dictionary somehow, for the key, because I want to assume to be the key, and for the index, in, zip, whatsoever. So when I will do that, I will look over and take a bit of two elements, and pack them in a key dictionary. And we saw before, we heard that you really create the key and the value. So somehow, when that, when that you know the solution somehow, that makes sense to you to try to put it on the key. And I put it index that uh, that it work with. Okay. Key and value. And in some way, when that you know it seems natural, but uh, the first time I had to do it. Huh? Uh, so and in that way, he's taking two values and creating the literary in that way. Okay. So the same way that you create the list, you have a way to create the sets, you have a way to create dictionary. Each of them have maybe a slightly that depends on the implementations. But you can do it in, in that way. Okay. Does it look okay? Or do you have any question about uh, the last few things? Yeah? So you can also do for a set, but seeing that this is the same than for the list, no need I will pass. So I mean I will just do it for you. So the same way. What is tricky is that the set and the and the dictionary start also with curly brackets. Okay? So what makes the difference is that here we have a key and we have a value, the set will just have values inside. So if I do that, and that I check the time, that's a set. Okay? If I would have a key and a value, it would be a dictionary. So the only things that are matter is the key values to go back to the set. OK. Uh, that's about sorting. Uh, Sorting um, uh, dictionary. So usually dictionary, when you print them, it shouldn't be ordered. So in Python, have not ordered. Right? Are you using IPython? Are you using IPython or Python? Is it spelling? So I mean, the only thing that causes the wood. In Python's uh, like to say I, will not I mean the key will not be ordered. So when you keep keys, it should look like what I have here. It will be generally the very much and you will play and uh, it doesn't have when you pin them it doesn't have to be activated or okay. when you use Python by default you use the word like to have it in order way. When you pin it so here I have an eye python things. When you print it, it reorders the key and it looks different. And uh, if I'm not wrong, in Python 3 and 6, now the features are ordered by default that you can rely on it. Because since that finger, Python doesn't do it, it means that the process is actually not happening. But the features are not ordered. 
Il n'y a pas que de sexe, mais il y a un autre rôle. Oui, tu checkes tout le monde, je suis un sexe. Non Donc, pour le sexe, la façon de créer le sexe, c'est quoi Donc, je peux vous faire un peu de temps. Je peux vous faire un peu de temps. C'est le même que le overtaxing, le range. Okay, let me switch the case. Uh, set conventions with numbers inside in some way. Okay. Usually, you want maybe to repeat or want to create a set of already known things, but you can allow you to set to a string or maybe you need to create a set with a lot of numbers and you want to use ranges, whatever you can have. I don't know. So it's much less than the list compression, the most known is the list compression. Okay. So that's all for this one. So in the last half an hour, we can go in definitions and functions. Okay? So let's do this. So up to now, anybody have a question about this? Whatever we saw in the second part here, or it seems to be over here, or this a little bit run. No, it's fine. Okay. So the third, the third notebook is about creating the functions, returning values, and we already did that in Python. So here is again to show what the specificity in Python. So to create a function, you just have to use that. Uh, the name of the function, the parameters that you want inside, then an index. Okay, you have to index two things like for the form, say that the body of my function, and then you can start to do things. Okay, so here I would like things x. Okay, so this, what I just did, that I just created the function, which is doing this, so now I can call it. Okay, if I do the call here. And write something in between. Okay. That's great. Uh, the thing that really what we do with function is that we do some processing and then what you see and do is give it back to actually another routine. So what you would like is for instance make use the return statement. So in this case, define, make a double, to my price x. And what I'm interesting is to double for some way. So we need to type of thing that put inside. Let's see, we may be able to double. So now, for that size, what that you define in make numbers, you can make make numbers, and here you just pass any figure, and then just pass your string. Okay, and you see that. It's actually two different things because it depends on the time. So, it tells you also that this is important for it to write the limitations. Because you can expect something as input, something that is Python is not the time dependent. If you need what, maybe it can work with whatever you need, but it does not take space. Okay? So, I would interest you to see maybe now. Usually, what we do when you make this is that you look at the answer what you want. And to make documentations. You write documentations using few of those, and then you will start to write the small description of the documentation. For instance, I'm going to put uh, the input. Uh, then you can have uh, a long descriptions. So it's it's not the standard, and it is the standard that is uh, it's only non binary So it raises that it's a compressed thing, which is very short to say it's what the virtual will do. Okay? So don't have to take more space than only one line explanation. So you can like, make long descriptions here that take several lines. Okay? And then usually what you do is that you will explain what are the input parameters 
of your function. So in that case, my function was x, and I will mention the type which I explain with it. So I expect to eat. Uh, or, but you see, it's only documentation, so it doesn't mean that you cannot pass a string. But I just tell you, I mean, this is working the way it is. So usually you say that, and then you put the descriptions of x. And also what is common is that you say what the function is returning. So for instance, in that case, uh, the flower, which will be an it, <laughs> and double is okay in some way. So double is might not be a perfect. Yeah, it's very <laughs> So yeah, don't use double because double is also a uh, third type and it's a specific and use those things. But I'm doing fast. So use proper words. Not like me. And then to finish the next thing, what you do is that you finish by this. So I have three at the beginning, three at the end, and this is considered, if you have a nice editor and not a Python console, it will be nicely rounded like the documentations in green or in other colors, or that you know that that's the documentations. And I will show you after that why this is useful. Ah. Okay. Wait. Let me just put it here. So it's another function, what I usually say. Okay, a short line, a more detailed one, the parameters, the return statement, and then what my function is actually doing. Okay, and the nice thing of it is that if you do now, my function here was called Frank. So if I do L of Frank, whatever I wrote there, is what is printed when you type L. Okay? So it means that somehow your function was also an object where you have a dog uh, attributes which store this thing. Okay? So whenever you put some documentations, it, this is stored with the functions. So whenever you need it, you will be aware. I mean, people can write documentation because people can check from the Python command line, whatever, what are the dog. And then when you make a project, you know that dots are important. So that's how you make documentation. So I plan at the end, but I think that is important. I'm going to mention it now. It might be worth mentioning that there are different ways to spell out the parameters, for example. Yeah. So there are, there are different formats how you yeah. you know how, how you write it in your docs. Yeah, document. I said that I was using non-pyrrhic way. But you can check, yeah, the Google way of doing it, which uh, I mean, I know only the Python, that's why uh, I use this one. But then you have a different way of how you will organize the parameters. So what will be like now is like the name of the parameters, two points, the type. And some of it is like you put, uh, I think, something like you say, uh, parameter, and then you spell the parameters, and that's the Google one. I don't know, or the Python one, and you have different way of doing the docs. Because then, when you make automatic documentations, the one that interprets those, we, I mean, you need the module that interprets this to make automatic documentations. That's why you have different type. So the important thing is that you are in when you program with people, you should be all the same, the same way, okay, and do the same thing. I probably like them quite much because I find it really old, but it's just personal. I wouldn't trust people to do it. Um, okay, so we saw that when we do these things, that makes it double. And we saw that actually you can not think it's again smooth. So you can put an integer, but it will work also for a string. Which or sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and nothing is forbidding me to do it. Okay? So the dog is important. Okay. I yes. want to change an existing function. How can I go back to the system in iPython? In iPython? Uh, arrow. 
sorry, if I delete big X in the meantime, will it dry? Because you already somehow you you start you start the state as the state before. So now you do an impression of big X, but you didn't inducing the previous states when you have the function. So now if I rerun my, my function with big X, then at the time that I will take them down here. So I can see really high it. And now that's where we're going to get rest So let's say big X is not an integer but a huge data frame. It will be stored somewhere in my run that. Yes. So you can think of default arguments as kind of the assignment at the, at the time where you find a function. Yeah. That's probably defined, the default argument is assigned at that point and is kept together with the function itself. So there is no way of deleting that. So if I want to keep that function, I don't want to get rid of whatever I put there as a default. I can't do that. But right, yes. because you don't want to have the default in that case. Yes. Okay, default is none, and then at the first time I call you, I pass you this, or I have it loaded somewhere. But you don't want, what else you? That's the default, it means that you need usually in it, or that's the usual thing that you need. I mean, normally the default arguments are not something like big data frame here. The, the most common default argument is actually none. So nothing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you will see why this is important in the second culture, uh, which is this one. So, the second one is we saw that you can have mutable and, and immutable parameters. Okay? So one of the good try is that if you pass as a default something which is mutable, stuff we start can happen. So for instance, let's create a function to which take a literary. So add the input. And the default value I want just to have A and to have B. Okay, so that's my argument. And if I had spy form, uh, sorry, in front of the two, there's a, a code at the end. Quote me for, for the two. Okay, thanks. And now what I would like is, let's say that you probably want to, to use two as an integer, not two as a string, so both should be oh. uh, integers. <laughs> right. So now what we do is so that was the I first want to say and I just one and then we want to do the part. Okay? So, the weird thing now is that if I call this function with no argument, what I expect is that when I call, I will get A is equal to B is equal to 3. Okay? Because I want by default that my default is sure, and then I will just add that inside. Okay, that's great. You think that is working. The problem is that if I read it again, it's still increasing the bias. Okay? Because since that my initial is mutable, every time the thing that I have admin has been changed to text and I just keep going and increasing it. So as an argument you should never pass the default parameters, default parameters which is mutable, because you will change it inside. 
after while see if you use So one way of doing is actually to use non. I know if it's well, but uh, and then you can check that if R is non. And then you can return the value that she wants. And that's actually the, the more can you just yeah that's no sorry can you go back to the example the, yes. no that one yes right there that function uh, that's actually the more common way to do it because um, it, what you see is so the difference is you had a return return some value there and what you're doing there is uh, you say if I actually received the default argument, meaning if I did not receive args from my caller, then I use this value there, this dictionary there, as my args value. So you sign it to args and then you continue. And function. then you continue. And you function with all the, I mean, there I just return something that doubled my dictionary, but usually what you do yet is that you fix the argument and then the call of the function, so for instance here, this is what made double. So the core of the function is always the same and is always executed. The only thing that you do is that you assign a default argument inside the functions if it's not. So I think the short and default, but the proper way is usually more in this. Okay. So check. So it's a very common pattern actually. Yeah. That's what you'll see a lot. Um, what kind of arts can I pass to this function now? How does the function know what, what arguments I can pass to it? Uh, I mean, it depends on the documentation of what the function is doing. So you can pass anything. Mm -hmm. Right here we say add to dict. So somehow you should pass a dict because we will add something to the dictionary. So it's what you But if you want, when it's not, it's set in the documentation so what you should pass and what will be the default. So I know if I have internet. I don't have internet. So, but if you use machine learning recycling term, so you will see that some parameters and some objects, when you pass an object that are not mutable, you pass no, and you say no. But if you check the documentation and say, okay, the default will be this type of classifier, and it will be created inside the functions, and it will use this. But if you check the, the string, the argument is equal to no, because the classifier itself is a mutable object. So you will see this pattern there for sure. So if you go in section and the information is, from what I know, this is how it's done. <coughs> so then, multiple the parameters. So we saw now that you can add uh, parameters which have a base, which you absolutely have to give the values, and some that you already have the default values. And why is it useful is because, for instance, we can get this function here. So max, I import the square roots, and I can define a function which will take x, y, z. And let's say this is the, I want to compute the distance between the two points. And what I have here is uh, the y of the point a to the, of the first point, and this is the y of the second point, and this is the point 1 and point 2, okay, and this is the x and uh, y is the f point. So, and the idea is that I want to compute the, the distance. So the distance can be that way. 
where you take the first part of the tuppers minus the second part of the tuppers, takes the rest. Right? So let's take this. this y equal to that, theta equal to the other thing. So like this, it gets documented on the same call. Absolutely. Yeah. So having the name of the, of the keyword, this is usually good. A part of, if there is some function that you know that anyway you need to pass, but at least it tells you what argument you are passing. And this is more clear as a 20 read. An extreme case is where you pass a flag variable. So you pass, you call a function and it has true. Right, that's entirely unclear what this true is doing, right? Yes. Uh, and then what I like, always do is I write argument name equals true, so that you can see what option is being passed in there. And what does it mean? And we were going to the doc, you probably have already a first look of what this thing is doing. So I'm removing uncertainty. Uh, then, so we saw that we can have several arguments we face and the were arguments we got. I mean, we have the keyword. And in Python, you have something which you can have packed all the arguments which are positionals by these things, star arcs, and all the arguments which we put the data with the defaults will be packed inside a dictionary which is keyword arcs, okay? So if I, just to give an example, if I take this variable arc, here, I could check that the first arc, so which is this line, and we print only the value of what was in star arc, will be this. So it's a tuffer with the name of the, of the value of the variable, the two first variable. And then the other one were keywords, so it means that we put the name and the, and the values. And this will be written as a dictionary, where we have the key that corresponds to the name of the variables and the value that corresponds to the value of variables. So in some way that could be useful. Maybe you can probably can be temporary, but this is useful when, for instance, here I show that I have points which was x, y, z. But imagine that I want to compute this things in four dimensions or in five dimensions or in six dimensions. I could use actually keyword argument and you pass me the number of points that you want and then I will loop over the keyword and let's compute the distance. So just to give an example because we have only five minutes. I can show you solutions. So I was saying to recompute the distance function using this. So if you check here, what I'm doing is that I'm checking the arguments here. And I'm making the sum of taking each argument in arcs, okay, compute the differences and the square, uh, the, the square like what we see. And then I look also on the keywords values, okay? And just taking the value of it, I make the same operations, I'm making every time the sums, 
and then taking the square root. So like this, what you are going to do is to get any <laughs> value that you want. So x, y, z, and then after z is a. And you get something like that, and this is still working, and you can add as much point that you want. Okay? So the keyword that you for this flexibility, uh, but you have to be careful because you need somehow the implementation could be up. So if you don't implement it, people don't know what you have inside your keyword. So that's something. Which also, another thing is that when you establish in the arts, you establish in the key arts, I meaning you cannot say something like x equal to 10, 5, then say nothing, and then zeta equals to. Once you start putting the, the, the keywords, you have to. Oh, okay. So, what? Yeah. You cannot do that. Exactly. Okay. Because what comes first is positionals. And they have a position and they mean something. When they come afterward, they have the name and something. And if I put, uh, I put it on top, and the one afterwards is linked to nothing. So it's considering as a keyword because it's starting the keyword and not as an arc. So all the arc are the, the beginning of the of the functions, and the keyword come afterwards. And the keyword are defined as the name of the variable equal something. Okay. So if you try to run this, it will tell you something. Positional argument follows keyword argument. Exactly that. You put an argument after the keywords. Okay. So I have to error that is So yeah, last example and then that's time. Uh, we almost mentioned it in some way. Uh, let's see. So I have this code snippet, which is here. And somehow we define A, B, and C. So A will be uh, integer, which is immutable. And then we have two lists where they are mutable. And we pass those to a function. And then we stop will happen to it. So x will be effectively ten to three. We will append a new value inside the list and we'll change <coughs> the list itself to ninety nine. <coughs> and then we print the value of the result what are inside the function and then we apply the function here and we print the initial values and see if they are being modified or not. Okay? And if you run that, we will obtain that. So if you do that if we check the numbers, 23 here, which have been affected here, it didn't change the value of the original value of A. Okay? So we change X inside, but it didn't change A. And then for a mutable one, so for instance this list, where we are finding a new value inside, so which is this one. You have to be careful because when you get outside, the original B values have been changed. So when you pass argument to a function that you do something on it, be careful because if you pass a mutable argument, it will be changed. Okay? So that's the takeaway of what's happening in the function. While if you pass an immutable argument, it will not change it. Okay? So if uh, don't I mean, be sure that when you want to pass an argument that you change it, it's because you really want, or uh, that you want to change an immutable argument, and you need to know what you are doing. Okay? So the big thing is that when it's immutable and that you change it inside the functions, it will not change the one that was passed outside. Otherwise, if it's a immutable, it will change it. Okay. The other thing is that's about for because. I will finish quickly this one, but global variable, never use it, but in case that you need. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can do that, so I think this is here. So we say you define x outside, and then set x where y, you can define when you write global x, you said that naturally you will use the x that was defined outside, and you will, you will change this one here. Okay. So then, here I make an assignment, and you will see that when I set x, the x that was outside was changed. And if you don't do that in the first case, 
uh, uh, the x was not changed afterwards. Okay. So, but I'm not sure that uh, you should use the robot whenever you can. Uh, the dog swing already saw it, and the function as, a, as objects, I already mentioned it when we use it. Like, for example, the dog swing that actually you have, you put inside the object itself the documentations. So this the type of thing like the function are object. That's the first object. Okay. Uh, you see that? Five hundred books if you want, or something like that. But I think that's what you want to do Where you have most more stuff. So which will be about reducing codes and how to implement uh, modules and create modules. Input output is how to read a file and uh, save into a file and those type of things. So it's using open and those things. It's not really complicated and it wasn't like only speaking about it. So you can read it and it's easy to understand. And then I would have liked to go through that, but okay, anyway. Uh, that's the standard library. So Python doesn't come only with four codes and, uh, and those type of things. We already saw that you have the first constants to make complex things. And uh, it comes with a bunch of uh, standard library. When, when you install Python, you have them with you. And it's a, you have a lot of stuff. Inside which are useful. So, for instance, you have OS that allow you to manage path. So, for instance, you want to find the path of the files, or the path, or you can do that uh, in the way like data uh, scrapping or those kind sort of things. Uh, you have stuff that allow you to add search some files, so we walk or to try to find some specific file with Nova and those type of things. So, if you search for standard library, you would have a bunch of, of things that are really useful when you have Python without the need of reinstalling the third party or reinventing the wheel. Usually, when you want to have a new feature, you check and it's already implemented. So, always check the standard library and what you have inside. Okay. And I think that's what we well, you can add that actually they can go through the notebooks and they have yeah. trouble doing this week or something, we are around. Otherwise, they can open an issue and do Okay, yeah, so you can go to the book and slide uh, your site by the uh, your page. So, just you can download it from there and you can then. So, whatever you need. Thank you.